machine's moving pretty fast now, but it wasn't always like that. So we'll go back in time a little bit and see what it used to be. And then I'll show you what I've done to the machine to make it move that quickly. So this was about the max speed of the machine before all the upgrades began. The little NEMA 23 stepper motors were struggling to push that big table and frame around. I mean it did cut steel, but with the homemade BT30 spindle that I made in one of my first YouTube videos, it cut without too much chatter and left a reasonable surface finish. So it was finally time to move the CNC mill out of the old shipping container and into the brand new workshop that we'd just completed. Now that the milling machine had a new home, it was time for the, all the upgrades to begin. One of the biggest upgrades to this machine was going to be the new BT30 spindle with automatic tool change capabilities. The first thing I had to do was create a spindle housing to hold that BT30 spindle cartridge. I first cut a piece of steel out of a piece of 50mm plate to make the housing. I then took that piece of steel and I rough turned it on the lathe into a nice round shape to get ready to build the spindle housing. I then went ahead and assembled ready for welding. So I went ahead and I tacked the top together and then I welded all of that out. I then set up to weld the bottom of it on, tacked it again and then welded all that out as well. The welding process ended up taking a little while because I sort of jumped around the part and left it to cool down a bit between welds. It was now time to drill a big hole to be able to use the boring bar. And I accidentally, uh, yeah, dropped the camera. So after that big hole was bored, I ended up turning the face and the side off and then I set up and came in with the big boring bar. All right, so we've got it all um, tacked up. So this is going to be the spindle housing, so I've machined, um, machined this housing here. Um, so that's all, uh, all ready to go, and then this here will slide up through the guts of that, and that'll be held on, and then the motor will be mounted here. So I'm just going to weld all this out now. So again, the welding took a bit of a bit of time because I ended up jumping around the part and letting it cool between passes. I did that in an attempt to reduce warpage. So I went through and I did all the welding um, on all the, all the parts here. Um, then I built a housing up here to basically act as a bit of a guard um, so that the belt has a bit of a guard on it. And then I, I think I'll put a sheet metal across here. Um, I also went and mounted um, the three horsepower um, AC motor. Um, as you can see, I've put a bit of a built tensioners into it so that I can tension it. Um, and then I just built this simple frame um, for it all to sit on. And then over here, we've got the air cylinder which sits on the top, which is what gets activated for the automatic tool change. And then on the side here, we've got a solenoid valve um, to make the air psh down and psh back once it's all um, done for a tool change. So um, the reason that this machine now moves so quickly is because we've gone from a small little NEMA 23 stepper motor to a one horsepower servo motor. Um, so these servo motors have all encoders in them. So they're actually talking back to the, um, to the controller. And basically if I lose, um, lose position at any point, the machine's just gonna completely shut down. Um, so there's a lot of safety built in with having servo motors and, um, over a, just a closed loop stepper motor, uh, sorry, an open loop stepper motor. So this is gonna be the, the case for the machine. I'm gonna have up here, I'm gonna have all the power coming in. So my three phase and then splitting off to my single phase through all of these relays. Um, here I've got my VFD. This is a three phase VFD. Um, it can run a 5.5 kilowatt um, AC motor. Uh, I'm only running a three horsepower, which I think is 2.25 kilowatt. Then off to the side of that, these are the two servo drives for the um, one horsepower servo motors. And these are the ethernet adapters that um, basically allow me to talk to my C82 board. So this is a C82 board, this is an Ethernet smooth stepper and the CNC for PC um, C82 board is what's going to be running the whole entire machine through Mark IV. Um, this machine, by plugging the Ethernet cable into here and then you plug it into the X, the Y, the Z, A, 
five and six. These are all, um, so it's a six axis uh, controller. Uh, these here will be able to take the alarm outputs from these if the machine loses steps or something happens and that'll allow the machine to instantly shut off and there won't be any um, serious crashes, fingers crossed. Um, then got a 24 volt power supply, so the 24 volt power supply will run the board and then I've got a 12 volt power supply here which will run the air solenoid that's on the spindle. Over here we've got just a your standard computer. Um, this is a Core i7 processor, 16 gig of RAM, um, and then Mark IV on the hard drive. Uh, this is a pretty basic computer. Um, there's no parallel ports or anything for this. Uh, it's all run through the Ethernet cable uh, which means faster transfer speeds and just a better all-round system. I've got eight relays here they'll be the ones that turn these on and off um, when the board tells them to and then these here are my inputs outputs and encoder and limit switches which will plug into encoder limit import one and output on the control board here. Um, there's also a safety um, kill switch um, that can be connected and then I've also got a 10, 0 to 10 volt output to um, plug into the VFD for full um, speed spindle control. On this machine I am also going to do an automatic oiling system for the linear rails and for the ball screws. So what I've got here is this is a pump, um, it's an oil pump off of AliExpress. Basically what happens is this, this pumps up the pressure all the way up and then these valves here, so these are, this is a valve um, bank, so there's five outputs, so it'll be uh, the four linear carriages and it'll be one for the ball screw and what happens is these valves, this, this pump will pressurize the whole system and then in the back of here there's these little ball bearing things and they, as the system pressure um, pumps up um, and the gauge is right around here, the, the pressure inside this um, basically is diverted into each one of these valves and then what happens is this solenoid valve will be in line and then there'll be a, a dump um, from the back side of the solenoid valve back into the, um, back into the oil system. So the way these work is the pressure needs to pump up and then the pressure needs to be released which allows these pins to all go back in and then it meters um, the exact same amount of oil out of each one of these orifices. So you can see there, um, looking at that, there would be the same amount of oil in each of these tubes um, when the pressure is released. So that's going to be um, probably the next thing that I do. I'm going to have to pull this machine completely apart again. I'm going to be putting the oiling system on the X, Y and the Z. So everything's just automatically um, lubricated and done. I don't really even have to think about it. Still a lot to do, but it's getting there. <laughs>